Hello and welcome to the Versant JPA screencast part 2. This is the second part in a series of screencasts examining Versant JPA. In part 2, we will examine the Versant JPA tutorial which was installed in part 1. The focus of this screencast is to give you a feel of how Versant JPA works, for example persisting, querying and deleting objects. The tutorial is divided into 10 steps covering various aspects of JPA. But first, we will take a look at setting up the project and examining the entities. The tutorial comes with an Eclipse project and will import it using the option Import Existing Projects into the workspace. That completes the import. Notice the project already has a version JPA nature. Any entities contained in the project will be automatically enhanced after compilation. Before we dive into the 10 steps, let us take a short look at the entities book and person. If you are new to JPA, then take a look at the version JPA documentation. Also consider taking a look at the JPA specification. JPA makes heavy use of annotations as you can see from the entity classes. Every entity class must have the entity annotation. ID fields or primary keys use the ID annotation. Relationships to other classes are annotated using the one-to-many annotation. In our case, a book can have several authors. Also notice the cascade type is persist. Persisting a book will automatically persist its authors. Finally, JPA uses the file persistence.xml to declare persistence units. We will see later how persistent units are used to create entity managers. A persistent unit lists the entities it will manage. Versant JPA requires the property versant.connectionURL, specifying the URL to the Versant object database. We need to create an empty database for our tutorial. We'll use the utility class create tutorial database. Creating a database is not part of the JPA specification. We'll use the server administrator class to remove any existing database and create a new empty database with the given URL. Step 1. Persisting a person object. In step 1 we are going to persist a person object. You will see the typical entity manager setup, how to persist an object, and how to begin and end a transaction. Notice we use the name of the persistent unit that we previously defined in persistence.xml to create an entity manager factory. This is a typical JPA pattern used to persist an object using a transaction in a relational database. The only difference is that we just stored a person object to the version object database. Step 2. Querying using JPQL, the Java Persistence Query Language. Again, we have the same setup with the Entity Manager as seen in Step 1. We now want to run a query to retrieve all person objects in the database. JPQL looks similar to SQL, however, remember we are querying against an object database. Step 3. Deleting objects. We now want to delete all person objects in the database. In order to do so, we first retrieve the objects 
remove them from the Entity Manager, and finally commit the transaction. This will remove or delete the objects from the database. Step 4. Persisting a network of objects. In this step, we'll see how to persist a book and its authors. We only need to persist the book because the one to many author relationship uses cascade persist. Thus, persisting a book will automatically persist its authors. Step 5. Querying by name. In this step, we want to find a specific book by querying it by name. The JPQL query contains a restriction on the book property name. The query will find all books with the name Java Concurrency in practice. JPL looks very similar to SQL, but remember we are querying against an object database. Step 6. Complex query. We want to find all books who have an author with their last name equal to Odersky. We use the in clause to join the book to its authors. Step 7. Querying using like. By this stage you should be getting the hang of JPQL and using a like predicate is very intuitive. While cards are denoted by using the percent sign. Step 8. Querying using name parameters. Name parameters can be used instead of inline predicate values. Thus queries can be reused with different predicate values. Name parameters are denoted by a semicolon and values bound using the query set parameters method. Step 9. Changing values. In this step, we want to change the book prices. We first retrieve the books from the database and update their prices. We only need to commit the transaction to persist the changes to the database. Step 10. Working with detached objects. A detached object is an instance of a persistent object that is not managed by an entity manager. Any changes to a detached object would not be persisted. To reattach such an object, use the entity manager merge method. That completes the Versant JPA tutorial screencast. For further information, visit versant.com. Thank you for your attention.